Hello, in this video, we're going to continue with our process of making a clickable SVG. So at this point, we've got a SVG on a page and it has rollovers, but right now I can't click on them. So if you don't have this working yet, I suggest going back and watching the other videos in this series first. Um, so for this particular document, again, we've loaded our SVG with jQuery into a particular div on the page. And then we've, uh, in a callback function, said that the maximum height is a certain amount. And that was to limit the height of my long, narrow uh, SVG so that it didn't keep growing and growing to fill the width of that column. Um, so now we're going to say, um, when the SVG is clicked on, depending on which path it within that SVG has clicked on, it should put different information into this div. So when I click on this particular bone, um, then information about the femur would pop up over on this side. So I could use a series of if statements to do that. If I've clicked on femur, do that. If I've clicked on uh, fibula do something else. Um, the more robust way of doing that is with JavaScript switch statements. So I'm just on the switch statement page on W3 schools. So I'll make sure that I link that in the assignment as well. But again, how this works is, I'm just going to zoom in here. Um, a switch is, like I said, a more robust if statement. So it's going to look at whatever's in the brackets here. So in our case, it's going to look at the SVG that's been clicked on and which element within that SVG is clicked on. And then each of these cases are like an if statement. So it's like in the case that they've clicked on femur, do this block of code. In the case that they've clicked on patella, do this block of code. Um, we also need to have these breaks here so that when the computer program is coming through here and it's going, uh, okay, well, it's not that case. Oh yeah, it's this case that it gets to this break and the break makes it jump out of the loop so that it doesn't keep um, going through the remainder of the code. So that break is a really important part. So if we look at a example here, um, here we're saying, okay, get the date. And then depending on that date, um, as we know, get date returns one through or zero through six. So in the case that it returns a zero, then the day is Sunday. In the case that it returns a one, then the day is Monday and etc. So we're going to use that same process to figure out which bone we have clicked on. Okay, so back in my code here, I'm going to add that switch statement. So what I need to say, so I'm still within the callback function for this load. So that's an important piece that I'm inside of that because we can't have the switch statement looking at stuff that hasn't actually been loaded yet. Um, so the basic syntax of a switch statement is switch in parentheses and then two curly brackets. And then within these curly brackets, eventually is going to go all of our other code, like what to do when things are clicked. But before I do that, I have to say this happens when um, something's been clicked on. And the thing that's clicked on is um, the SVG. Now, our SVG is called Bones. So I can actually refer to that ID name because that's getting loaded onto the DOM. So I don't need to target the, um, the, S the div or anything like that. I can target the SVG directly. So I'm still going to do dollar sign parentheses quotes and I'm going to do hashtag bones because it's names bones. And I have to say, when do I want this to execute? Well, if somebody's clicked on it. So dot click bracket, bracket, semicolon. And then within the parentheses, I do my function. So it's within this function where I want to do my switch statement. So again, it's switch parentheses. Oh, and I've spelled it wrong. Switch regular brackets and then curly brackets. Um, within the 
within the parentheses here, I'm going to write evt dot target dot id. So this is going to return the ID of the element that they've clicked on. Now, in order to get this e EVT, I need to put that within this function up here. So within those two parentheses, I'll just undo that so you can see and I'll zoom in more. Within the parentheses of the click function, I'm going to put EVT there as well, because that's the event. So the thing that they've clicked on. Um, and then we're saying within that event, what is the ID that of the thing that they clicked on. So then between the parentheses, I have to do my different case statements. So I'm going to say case, and then in quotes, I'm going to put the different ID of the, um, of the path. So in this case, I'm going to do femur. Now at the end of a, the case line, it is a full colon, not a semicolon. So we don't see that often in coding. So I wanted to point that out. So case and then femur and then colon. And then after that, we put all of our code. So right now I'm just going to do a console log so I can be sure that this is working. So I'm just going to say uh, femur clicked and a semicolon. And then I do need to have a break there. So it's just the word break with a semicolon. So let's do two different elements. Actually, we should just check the one first. Um, always in a, a case statement, you should have a default case as well. So after the break for the case, but still within the switch statement, I'm going to say default. Now this is what to do if, say, they've clicked on something that's not one of our things. Um, and in this case, we're just going to have it break out of the loop. We don't actually need it to do something if they haven't clicked on femur. So I'm going to save that and open it up in the browser. I'll also open my console log or my console so I can see if my log is working. For some reason lately, I've been getting this error in Dreamweaver when I preview. So I'm just ignoring that. It doesn't seem to be, it, it seems to be a preview problem, not a co actual code problem. So if I click on this now, I should see femur clicked. Now, if you don't see that, you're going to have to come back and compare your code with mine to see if, um, you know, you've missed a particular curly bracket or have you used a full colon uh, or in a semicolon at the end of these lines. So those are all things to check if yours isn't working and make sure you've spelled it the same here as is the ID within the SVG. So if I want to check out a different, um, like say make two bones clickable before my default, but after the break for femur, I would just add another case in there. So in the case that they've clicked on, um, oops, on fibula, let's say, and then full colon at the end there, then I could do another console log. Uh, you, uh, clicked. Semicolon at the end of that line. And then again, don't forget your break. You have to do a break for each case within your SVG. So with that saved, I can move over to here. Um, and I should be able to now click on that. And I can't click on these ones yet because I haven't coded that, but then I can click on that one. Okay, so I've got those two clickable cases now. Okay, so now I don't want it just to console log. I want it to do something interesting. And what I want it to do is change the text that's out in this info um, div. So within femur there, I'm going to do a pointer, oops, uh, do dollar sign bracket quotes hashtag. So a pointer to my info div. So that ID there is the name of my bootstrap div that I'd created earlier. That is where my information is going to go. Dot HTML bracket bracket quote or bracket bracket semicolon. 
And then I'm just going to put in there all the HTML that I would want to have shown. Oh, it does need to be in quotes. Should they click on that particular bone? Um, so again, I'll just bring this up, refresh my page. If I click on that, then I've got that information going within that div. Okay. Same would be true of my fibula. I'd still want to target that same div. I just want different information in there. So I still do info. I still want to do a dot HTML within there. I need my quotes and then I just need to put my information that I want to be shown when fibula is clicked. And then now I can click on those two and it switches back and forth. Okay, so you just have to continue the cases for all the different elements within your SVG that are clickable.